Aaron Scott says he's going to shock the world before doing the least shocking possible thing, committing to Ohio State. Let's talk about it, Michigan fans, here on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Sunday. Well, some might not feel it's so happy now. <laughs> Locked on Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Grouper. We're going to do some doubling up today to make up for some lost time due to travel and all of that with Big Ten Media Days. But we are going to get into this Aaron Scott of it all. Uh, Aaron Scott with a, some some hijinks on his commitment uh, through the Oregon bag off of the table, through the Ohio State bag off the table, picked up the Michigan bag only to pull out an Ohio State jersey, thus ending the uh, all of the drama. He is officially verbally committed to Ohio State, uh, as many expected. And the number one player in the state of Ohio to Ohio State, the number two player in the state of Ohio to Ohio State, Michigan, targeted both. They did get Jordan Marshall, and that's certainly a feather in their cap. Uh, But it is not an ideal situation when you put all of your eggs in one proverbial basket, and that basket is the state of Ohio. Um, Because when it comes to cornerbacks, Michigan essentially was only targeting four like at a high level, the aforementioned Scott and Bryce West. And then you add in uh, Terion Nichols, who ends up committing to Kentucky, and Jameer Grimsley, who ends up committing to Alabama. So not a good situation for the defensive back room for Michigan. Now, there's a couple ways to kind of look at this. Number one, it, it, it is to be expected in a lot of ways. And I know if you've been watching or listening to this show, if you read my predictions, article that came out what a month plus ago now at this point you're going to sit there and say but Isaiah you predicted him to come to Michigan uh remember this isn't a crystal ball there's no way for me I mean I could go and change it but that's not it's it was a snapshot moment uh and in that moment I do believe if he was to make a decision he would have chosen Michigan uh because he he told the players he told the recruits that he was coming I had a current player tell me that Said, hey, he told me he's coming. He told me he's a Wolverine. And he wasn't like Bryce West. Bryce West from Cleveland, Glenville, was very clearly not going to end up at Michigan. Uh, There was certainly some hope, but, uh, you know, long have I said I thought that one of the two was going to, and it really felt like Aaron Scott, who grew up an Oregon fan but didn't want to go the distance, was probably going to end up at uh, somewhere other than the home state school. Uh, So I spoke to uh, at Big Ten Media Days, I did speak to someone who covers Ohio State and I asked them what they had heard at that, you know, in that point, I think this was like Wednesday or Thursday. I don't remember which day of Big Ten Media Days it was, Uh, but I had asked him, I said, what, you know, what is your thoughts on Aaron Scott? What are you hearing? And they said, listen, we're not hearing anything like we don't, you know, he's like, don't really know what he said to me, though, was, listen, if I were to pick where he's going to go, I would say it's Ohio State, but I don't know. And he said, here's, here's what the deal was. He said, when I talked to Aaron Scott after his visit to Michigan, he said, I'm going to Michigan. When I talked to him after his visit the following weekend, where, you, know, what, what it, you know, now now that you've gone and visited Ohio State officially, do you have any idea where you're at? And he said, I'm unsure. Now I don't know. Um, so... That's the nature of recruiting. Uh, I, I obviously will admit that my prediction was wrong. Certainly, that's bound to happen. I still come from the old school version of putting in predictions. Back when I was at 24-7 Sports, it wasn't about have 100% accuracy as much as it was have a snapshot of what you think someone's going to do. And at that time, it definitely certainly felt like Aaron Scott was going to end up at Michigan. Doesn't mean I was any less wrong i was i was very wrong but don't uh i all i'm saying is don't take me being wrong there as being a sign of like some grander you know you know something else no one really fully knew but at, at the same time it does make sense that he'd end up at ohio state it's kind of like lavert hill going to michigan 
Uh, I remember having this conversation with Steve Wiltfong. I think I brought this up on a previous podcast, but I'm, I, I think it's worth resharing. Uh, I remember talking to Steve Wiltfong at, I think it was after, I don't know if it was after the Army All-American Bowl game or if it was the, after the Combine Day, but we were leaving the Alamo Dome and we were walking back to our hotel. And uh, I, you keep in mind, I was just still getting into the business. I had done some interviews and stuff with recruits and things like that, but and that was like my first paying job there. But I certainly had no full uh, understanding of how the process worked or anything like that. So I asked him, I said, you, so you feel like, because I think he had a, a crystal ball in for Levert Hill to Michigan. And I was like, that's not what I'm really hearing just from talking to, you know, talking around, talking to people. And you see, it still seems really mom. It still seems like he could end up at Michigan State. Remember at that time, Michigan State was recruiting pretty well. And he said to me, listen, Levert Hill is going to go to Michigan. He might not know right now in January. Keep in mind, there was no early signing day. There was just national signing day. He said he might not know right now that he's going to Michigan, but he's going to Michigan. That's kind of what this situation was, right? It was a situation where Aaron Scott might not have known he was going to Ohio State, but he ended up going to Ohio State. Sometimes that's just how it works. It certainly did not work out for Michigan. It worked out pretty poorly, I would say, obviously. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Certainly, uh, they're, they're at, you know, re- reading the message boards, and there was probably very few Michigan fans that, that felt anything other than hopeful. But um, it's, it's a loss, of course. You want to get one in over your rival. But it's hard to pull Ohio guys out of Ohio. Certainly, I think that there was a greater chance than a lot of people will give it credit for, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. It, that, and that's the thing with recruiting. And listen, Ohio State has gotten top-tier recruits, cornerbacks. They've gotten, yeah, obviously, lots of players. Even before they became this uh, high-end wide receiver school, Ohio State has long gotten wide receivers, even when it was a situation kind of like what Michigan is, where, you know, have fun blocking. That's just what Ohio State's been. But Michigan is going to have to do something different here because you lost out on pretty much everybody that you were really trying to get. And you lost two of them to Ohio State, so that's not a good look either. And now you've got to try to go out there and try to figure out who you're going to get as far as corners because you don't have a heck of a lot of corners at the moment. Sure, you've got some guys that, that are certainly development pieces, and you know, including... Some of those guys that could end up at safety, that safety rather, uh, you know, you got to look at like a Dewan Waller. Is he a corner? Is he a safety? I'm not I'm sure that we have really a very good idea about that at the moment. Uh, and they've got some guys that certainly could move over. We've seen, you know, Cody Jones, I felt was a uh, safety all the way and he's been playing corner. It, it, it really varies. And could they go out and get a Zaquan Patterson and could he end up being a cornerback? There's maybe. But Michigan has put itself in a precarious position. Let's talk about that precarious position here in just one moment. But listen, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Listen, every time that I've needed to try to find somebody, for any kind of role, you know, LinkedIn's the first place you go because you can see all of their information right there. It's really nice and easy. LinkedIn Jobs just makes that even better. It's so easy to create a free job on LinkedIn Jobs. Uh, you won't, it'll make your head spin how fast it is. So first you add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire Just like Michigan is needed to add the right uh, team members going through the transfer portal, you can use your own transfer portal. That's LinkedIn Jobs. That can help you win your own championship with your business. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs, number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, so did not go well for Michigan. Certainly, I mean, put it this way. I, I, I had a sentence <laughs> in, in I had pre-written it just like anyone else would. 
I had pre-written it and I had a sentence that said, you know, he shocked people by going to Michigan. But the par- ensuing paragraph that I had was all about uh, Aaron Scott spurning Michigan to go to Ohio State. So that should tell you what you need to know <laughs> as far as my confidence level at this point. So it uh, didn't work out. So I, I'm, I'm perusing the 24-7 sports prospects board. That's, uh, that is, uh, Steve Lorenz does a good job curating that as far as the guys who are, uh, who are looking good for Michigan. Uh, right now, there's only one top target left on the board, and that is Seattle, Washington, O'Day safety. As far as defensive back, as far as the high, high, like really good chance, Kyan McDonald. But he's, a, again, he's a safety. 6'0", 175. Could he be play corner again? Who knows? Uh, high choice. He's got two three stars. You're looking at uh, Jeremiah Lowe. He's a guy that Michigan had been connected with a couple times over the course of some time. Uh, but, I mean, he's nationally rated 1,085. It's a Kentucky guy from Lexington, Kentucky. Can Vince Merrill's recruiting him. That seems like that's probably unlikely he ends up at Michigan. Um, and then beyond that, it's just a bunch of guys I, I don't really know, right? Brayshawn Williams, three-star. He's a scout look. Is it, that these are all under scout look. He's 412th in the country, so he's actually a four-star according to the composite. Jonathan Kamara, who's a Kansas commit, 1206 in the country. Tony Mathis from Macon, Georgia, is a safety. Again, we're, we're just lumping them in together. A 956 in the country. Uh, and the other two are safeties. Uh, so I think at that point, you're going to start to have to look at who is offered more so than um, you're going to have to go to the well. I don't think Michigan is necessarily completely in trouble. If Michigan goes out, I think one of the only problems for Michigan is is there's not going to be a lot of like buzz coming off of a big game necessarily in when someone's really going to be making their decision. That's kind of an issue to some degree, right? Because uh, if they had an early game, and I think this is one of the things is like if they had an early game, like a week two game where Michigan played like, you know, Alabama and beat them or something, then suddenly there'd be all this buzz and this hype. And then you just kind of got to sustain that and hope that, you know, you beat Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State at the end of the year. Um, but that's, um, doesn't always <laughs> go that way. Um, so, so Michigan's going to have to s- sit around and, and wait and see what, uh, if they're able to flip somebody is pretty much it. Cause as far as their offers go, as far as their top targets go, um, there are none that are uncommitted in the top, pretty much most of these guys. I mean, I'm just looking here. Um, I think one of the earliest ones that would be f- easily flippable. I mean, you could flip Jameer Benjamin maybe from West Bloomfield, obviously, considering his, uh, you know, he, he's been coached by Roy Bellamy at some point. He's a three-star. Um, he, he's Northwestern certainly is going to be trying. David Braun's going to be trying to retain some of these guys, but he would be a guy that I would maybe take a look at uh, just for the sake of now you're just trying to get bodies. Austin Alexander, who is another uh, Kansas commit, is uh, uh, 430 in the country, uh, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. He is from Chicago. And but then you're just going down this list, and it's just like almost every guy that they have offered is committed. That, that's an issue at the cornerback position. Almost everyone that they have offered has committed. There's just a handful of guys out there who haven't. So this might be a situation where Michigan, which has weirdly had a really tough, tough go when it comes to trying to get cornerbacks at times. Yes, they got five star and Will Johnson, but out of all of these years that Michigan has had, like among the top, uh, top pass defenses in the country, and let's let's take a look at that. Michigan's had the, some of the top pass defenses in the country since Jim Harbaugh's taken over, and yet it has been an absolute struggle. So since Jim Harbaugh has taken over, let's just take a look at the pass defense. Number three, Michigan in 2015. Michigan was number one in 2016, number one in 2017, number two in 2018, uh, 2019 all the way down to 10. 2020 is probably not a good place to look for anything because that was the worst pass defense Michigan had. Number 90 in the country rebounded 
pretty well in 2021 at number 27. And then 2022, uh, Michigan ended up having the, and I'm, I'm not seeing it really quickly here. I'm going to have to search. Oh, 20, number 20, pass defense. So Michigan has long had, and you know, Michigan's pass defense finished better than Ohio State's did a year ago. Michigan is, has had a lot of much better success than Ohio State, for instance, in pass defense, and yet it has not attracted the same top corners that Ohio State has managed to get. That's a good news, bad news situation in the sense of you want to be able to get better personnel, and yet Michigan has not been able to do that. And I think part of it is Ohio State has managed to get, you know, guys that are physical freak looking type of guys, the Jeff Okudas of the world. Didn't work out for him at the Detroit Lions, but he still was picked, what, number three overall. Denzel Burke, even though he's not had great games against Michigan, will be a first round draft pick probably. That's Ohio State, man, no no matter how much, when when you see them in certain games looking like they're completely lost, end up having that first round draft pick type uh, area that they go to. Whereas Michigan, who's the top corner that's been picked? They've been David Long. It's been uh, Jordan Lewis in the third round. It's, I mean, Will Johnson will certainly break that. Will Johnson, I would imagine, will be a first round when after next year if he decides to not stay for all four years. But, um, I don't know. It's it it's it's odd the lack of success Michigan's had at recruiting cornerback in particular. They've gotten good guys. I think that so, the the guys that are three stars that Michigan's had come through recently. Jaden McBurrows, Miles Pollard. I mean, you look at their offer list. It looks like a five star offer list. Both have Alabama and LSU, if my memory serves. Let's double check that, but. That's usually a pretty good sign, right? Like if, if they have you know, those, those schools that are always, uh, always have that top, top talent, that's a, obviously a great thing to, to get those types of guys. But at the same time, if you're Michigan, you want to get more Damani Jacksons to go with Will Johnson. You want to have two guys that can do that. Because if you don't, yeah, you've got to develop, but not, now you, you've got to work a little bit harder. You've got to do some things that maybe um, to, to be able to lure these guys, you're going to be in, in and then you've, you're just going to, it's going to be a little bit longer of a road. Maybe they aren't as ready to play right away like Will Johnson. So, yeah, Miles Pollard had Alabama. He had, uh, he didn't have LSU, but he had uh, Alabama. He had Florida. He had Oklahoma. Uh, he, he had Miami. He had, Pretty much everybody that you want. Jane McBurrow's had Alabama, LSU. So they've got some good three stars. They're going to need to step up in the interim, and Michigan's going to need to show this year with the defense that it can continue, can can field yet again another shutdown pass defense. And then you're going to need to be able to show something for it because having guys, I think one of the big knocks against Michigan at this juncture is that other teams can say, all right, yeah, Michigan had a really good pass defense, right? Where did Channing Stribling go in the draft? Where did uh, Vincent Gray go in the draft? Where did Jamon Green go in the draft? That's not ideal. It's not ideal. All right, let's continue talking about the recruiting of it all. There's another player who's going to make a college commitment uh, tomorrow on Monday. Don't know that it's looking great for Michigan either. (laughs) It is from a torrid start to just kind of a weird, weird, weird... uh, Last month plus, month and a half, just where Michigan's at at the moment. Talk about that here in just a second. I know we're doing late Sunday for the uh, for these podcasts here. Um, so we're doing one here, and I'm going to take a bit of a bit of a break, an exercise break, and we're going to come back, and then finally we'll get to the Big Ten Media Days wrap up. Uh, regrettable doing it on. Uh, to do it on Sunday, but uh, here's the deal. Uh, I had to drive back on Thursday. Uh, my plan was to do a podcast at, right afterwards and then head home. Got a call from my grandma being like, hey, I need you to get your dog <laughs> at like t- 10, 10, 30. And uh, it, otherwise don't come tonight or whatever. And it was like, oh, great. 
and it's a five hour drive. So couldn't do that. Had to, had to rush home, got, got back around 10, 15. And then, um, the next day, uh, I see, I think I've told you guys before I have an, I appear to have an allergy from field turf. It basically feels like having what felt used to what I used to think a hangover was whenever I drink, uh, I've learned that's an alcohol allergy now. But uh, my body can't process it. And being on field turf from nine to five for two straight days, uh, I basically crashed for two days. Today, I'm finally feeling like a normal human person. So hence, here we are doubling up and we'll double up tomorrow. You prob- again, probably late afternoon, evening. I will be at an NIL event for, uh, for the champions circle and uh, the Big golf outing, helping them out with that, and then we'll we'll talk about a little bit about that, baby, if there's anything worth talking about, and then we'll uh, we'll continue with more Big Ten takeaways because there's a lot of stuff to, to take away from that, of course. So it warrants a bit, and then we're just going to be in the full five day a week grind. Uh, so that's that's the hope and the goal for the podcast right now. You got tons of content coming. If I can keep my microphone sitting up here. All right. So the other news that has come out of the woodwork is Bennett Warren. Uh, the offensive tackle uh, is uh, planning to make his pledge on Monday. So that is happening. Let's see if I can pull him up real quick. Uh, he is the number 82 player in the country. Uh, right now, it seems like he is, even though he's considering four schools, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Tennessee, and Michigan. It's between Tennessee and Michigan. Uh, again, it doesn't really... Hadn't really seen like Michigan was in a good spot uh, or had seen like Michigan was in a good spot. But as of today, it is looking like it is Tennessee. Uh, I hadn't even pulled up. I wanted to talk about this before. I hadn't even pulled up the the crystal ball. Uh, Suddenly he is trending to Tennessee. Uh, The trio at Michigan Insider, Steve Lorenz, Bryce Merrick, and Stan Webb all put in their uh, predictions that he will end up at Tennessee. So Michigan has its five that it wanted initially. Uh, to get out of the uh, offensive line as far as the commitments there. And I, I think that, that it's, it's a great haul. It really is. I, I'm, not, I'm never going to complain about having uh, three four-stars and two three-stars. I mean, as considering the development Michigan's had at the position, I mean, s- some of the guys, I mean, some of them are transfers, right, and, and everything like that uh, that they brought in. I mean, Drake Nugent certainly wasn't like a five-star type. Olu with Timmy wasn't like a five-star type, but we have high expectations for some of those, right? Um, as long as you have uh, continue just fill with bodies that can develop, they can wait a little bit. You don't necessarily need uh, the five-star there. I think Michigan can continue to develop that position uh, very, very well as long as Sharon Moore is still around, which might not be for very long if he gets a head coaching gig. But nonetheless, they, they've got a lot to work with. Uh, probably for quite some time, it, you know, I think that some guys will certainly be gone after this year, but then you, you, you've, you've got a good rotation. And that's the thing is the Jim Harbaugh even said like, listen, there's 10 guys right now. I look at 10 guys as being starting caliber. That's two full offensive lines. And I fully agree that that, that really kind of feels like th- their second offensive line could probably be starters. Uh, you could probably put them anywhere in the country and they would excel. That's where Michigan is with the offensive line. Still, however, it is a disappointing situation that, again, Michigan, remember a long earlier, long time ago, now by recruiting standards, a couple months ago, I've been, I've been asked multiple times as far as on the mailbag, how many five stars are Michigan, is Michigan going to get? Ultimately, when this class is done, I'm, I'm, it's going to be zero, unfortunately. Uh, unless Brandon Baker out there, who has been kind of linked to Michigan, but doesn't really seem like he's paying Michigan much mind, Unless he suddenly just decides, you know what, this is the best fit. I'm going to go to to play for Sharon Moore and Jim Harbaugh because uh, they're the guys that can really get me to where I need to go. Michigan also has that same issue with, and this is maybe where the team-centric thing kind of hurts Michigan to some degree, playing as a team, being the Detroit, the 2004 Detroit Piston version on football uh, it, 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 it creates an issue sometimes where I think like not one guy is necessarily standing out and the top lineman, uh, went what the fifth and the seventh rounds last year, Olu went in the fifth and, and Ryan Hayes in the seventh. I mean, in part, that's because of just the body type and certainly they can prove themselves at the next level. 
but it's still an issue that Michigan's had where a lot of their guys aren't going on the top. The one and the ones that are the defensive ends mostly. Michigan's also not doing a great job of getting those guys. Make it make sense. Anyhow, all right, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, but we are going to continue on later. So this one will be out when it's out. <laughs> uh, it's 7 11 at the moment. So on audio, probably 7 30. Uh, video, probably more like 9 30. And then the other one will, uh, will come out probably more like uh, 11 o'clock. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will talk to you again later this evening. Peace.